everyone. Welcome to another nanosode of the book table by Backroom Whispering. I'm Dorothy, and today I will be talking to Rebecca and Dave, who are a couple of novelists who collaborate. They also collaborate on more things in life because they are a recently married couple. So we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of writing with the person that you are married to. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Um, I'd like to start with a big congratulations. You guys got married last month. How does it feel? Has the excitement cooled down a little bit, or are you still riding the adrenaline? Well, I don't know if there was ever straight-up adrenaline, but it it's pretty awesome. I haven't lost anything yet, that's for sure. That's good. It's exciting, except I'm having issues with changing my name, but it's fine. It's yeah, fine. right. There's that it's whole fine. thing. Yeah. It's fine. Hmm. Your name is different on my phone, so that counts. Yeah, yeah that's official. That's like government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty official. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right in. When did you guys decide to write together or collaborate on creative projects? Was it before or after you started dating? It was before. Absolutely before. I mean, we uh, we actually got together pretty quickly after we started, um, after we met. But that was one of the main reasons we hooked up so, or we got together so quickly. It was because we were just so um, together on this issue, I guess. Well, together on the issue, meaning we were started working on a project. We were just having like pretty kind much of right a, away, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, we talked a little bit about how we were both writers, and then had this like, oh, we should write a book together, and then sat down one day and came up with the bare essentials of a story. Yeah, it was that- actually in the car. We were in a car ride, and I was, and I think I said, hey, do you want to write a story together? And then we got a plot together in like a very. It turned out to be a pretty long car ride because I think we got stuck in traffic, and we just didn't care. Because it was actually a lot of fun. So she's shaking her head as though she doesn't remember this, but I do. Okay, that is adorable. I love it. <laughs> um, so give us a status update on that project. How is that project? And you guys have been dating for about two years now, right? Well, dating almost almost three. Yeah. Dating almost. for two, three, almost three, married almost for three a years, month. Yeah. <laughs> um, how's that project going? Well, it's stalled at the moment, but we actually had... Um, what is it, like 90 pages of, like, really usable material along with the entire plot and, like, you know, beginning, middle, end. Um, and, uh, so I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, we just need to really get back on that one project. Uh, Becca herself is very impulsive when it comes to writing, so she has to really be very much in the mood for the specific project she, uh, she's on. Once she gets an idea in her head, she can't not write it, so... Um, yeah, I mean, our story, so we have all of our characters are set up. We have a full outline for the entire book, including chapters and what's going to be included in the chapters. And we've written, right. yeah, we've written a decent amount and we know what's happening after the book. So what kinds of like huge, long lasting arcs we're introducing and little details about certain things. But yeah, it's been a while since we've actually like written anything. Yeah, I mean, we know it's going to be a series. We know. Especially once we finish the first book, it's probably going to be off to the races. Um, but we have to find, we're, you know, looking to find that extra, extra inspiration to just really hammer it out and finish it. Excellent. So, um, aside from your collaborative projects, I know that you both write independently. Um, what percentage of your work would you say is independent versus collaborative? Ninety nine percent for me is independent, <laughs> and, then I, and then I'm going to say zero percent for me is non collaborative. Um, you you do. I talk to you about everything before I do it. Basically, okay. if you've ever oh, if you've so ever seen okay. if you've ever seen House MD, he uh, has this thing where he he you know he's a solo genius. I'm not calling myself a genius, but he's a solo genius who like thinks of all the ideas. But he literally has to every single time he's doing a case or whatever has to bounce ideas off of other people. And so there's an episode where he doesn't have a team anymore and he grabs the janitor and brings him in his room so that he can bounce ideas off of him, like medical ideas. And so I'm kind of like that where if I'm making a book, I basically need to talk the entire thing out with somebody in order to like have, in order to be creative, really. That's what I found. Um, that might have something to do with me being a twin and having always been able to talk to somebody who had the exact same brain as me. Um, it's but not exactly the same, I hope. It's very, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 
but yeah, that's that's how I work. So I need to be collaborative, which is why I like this. Rela- the, well, it's one of the reasons I lo- love this relationship so much is because it's very easy to be collaborative with a very creative person. So. Oh, that's so great. Um, she's smiling at me right now. It's nice. <laughs> you guys are too stinking cute. Um, so we asked for some questions from other members of Backroom Whispering and from our social media followers. So we have a few uh, from there. And this one's from Munya. She asks, what is your writing process when you work together? Does one do a rough draft and the other one refine? Do you each write different POVs or something else? And it sounded like you came up with like each concept together. Yeah, so actually, when we were first imagining the project, I was thinking we would be doing two different POVs, basically switching off chapters, because I've done a collaborative project before, and that's what we did. Um, But Dave felt really strongly that we shouldn't do that, because he feels like that's kind of a cop-out, and sometimes annoying to read when you're just switching between two kind of like drastically different styles every chapter. And we also have a protagonist who's really like, the protagonist and even though we have a secondary protagonist it wouldn't make a lot of sense for her to have as much room in the story as Eric so we eventually decided we were going to try to write stuff together which has been interesting I think Dave would like us to be writing stuff more together than we are I need to be sort of independent when I'm writing and not have someone looking over my shoulder and talking about every sentence whereas he kind of wants to be doing that So we've had a, it's been a process trying to figure out how to make it work. What ends up happening often is we'll sort of split scenes and say, hey, you can write this part and I'll write this part. And then we try to mimic each other's writing style and throw stuff at each other to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and then read over what each other has done. And so far, that's pretty much how it's been working. And it's been working pretty well. But I think for me, it feels a little more like, work than the average writing project which might be why it's happening more slowly yeah well um i think one of the main things i like to do now that i'm adapting to her style as well where she is more solo is i'll say go ahead and write what is you know on your mind when it comes to this project and then i will go through it and edit which is actually my favorite thing to do anyway you know i'm a i'm i consider myself a writer but i consider myself to be a better editor uh, when it comes to pretty much anything. So um, I'll go through and say, you know, if I wrote something, this dialogue is not the same style as the character that I had in mind, that kind of thing. And I'm really good at um, delving into something and kind of making it more perfect, more than I am actually just writing it myself a lot of the time. Um, so when it comes to this book, you know, she'll write a chapter and I'll just say, well, let me read it and I'll go through it and then we'll figure it out from there. Um, so that's enough collaboration for me to say, you know, we'll write this and then when we both edit, when we, you know, either one of us edits the other one, it will sound enough like both of us that it is very obviously a collaborative piece and um, kind of fluid in its writing style. So that's how it's been for me. Well, that actually goes really nicely in the next question from Madeleine, uh, which was, how do you resolve disagreements about re- writing or creative effort? So if Rebecca says, this scene needs to go this way, what do you do, Dave? If she says the scene needs to go this way, this is uh, um, one of my, if, if I do say so myself, one of my talents is saying to myself, okay, if this person who I'm working with needs this to happen, I need to find a way for it to work for me. So I'll say, okay, well, we'll do that. But in order for that to work, this and this and this and this needs to happen. Um, and you've heard me do this a few times before where she says, you know, I want this character to be this way. And maybe something earlier in the book doesn't make sense with that. I'll say, okay, well, then we need to go back and make sure that there's no holes here um, and, you know, figure out how to make everything work with that. You know, and that that's actually happened a few times where, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to think of a specific example right now, but we've had to, um, if a certain character changes based on the way she wants to do it or a certain plot point changes based on the way we want to do it, I have to change, I have to go back and talk about the beginning again, talk about the middle again, and talk about the end again because one little thing can <laughs> cascade into making everything else a little bit different. Um, so that's how I deal with it personally. Um uh, 
I also tend to argue with myself more than I argue with her. <laughs> so I'll, you know, go through a thing where I'll just be saying, okay, well, this makes sense. Um, and this next plot point makes sense. Oh, but wait, this happened before, right? And she'll say, yeah. I'll say, okay, so that doesn't work. And then, so I just basically start arguing with, with myself until I think it works. And then at the end of that, she says, okay, that makes sense. Or she has something to jump in about. But usually it's just me talking to myself for a little while, <laughs> trying to figure out how to make <laughs> everything work. Yeah, I think for me, it's really just an exercise in compromise. Um, I don't think we've had any like real fights where mm -hmm. we've been like upset with each other or haven't been able to agree on a certain thing. Um, I think it helps that I, before this began, um, had taken a class where a professor read through one of the novels I'd written and we just did like serious editing, which actually involved deciding that I needed to rewrite the entire thing. Um, so, what I learned from that was essentially that even though as a writer I get like super emotionally attached to my ideas the way I come up with them and know this character is going to be this way and this is how this is going to go and I want this scene to look like this. Um, accepting that sometimes that might not actually be the best way for it to work. And so I have been in that mindset I think for this whole project where there's an occasional thing where I'll stick to my guns and be like, no, I really think it should go this way. Like I really like that idea. But for the most part, if he says, well, I think it would make more sense to do it like this, or I kind of saw it going like this, we can just talk about that and then make whatever work mm -hmm. um, I think in a way of, that we're both satisfied. I think one of the best example, examples of that is the second POV character, who's Kat, uh, her name's Katya. Um, we had a lot of discussion about her. I think she is probably Becca's favorite character in the book. I like the main character a lot. But these two characters are easily the most complex um, mm -hmm. in the whole story, um, which, of course, makes sense. But we really did a lot of good work on this. And um, we actually had a long conversation about whether we were going to start her point of view at the beginning and have it be half and half, like we were talking about before, or to have the other character be the main character for a lot of it. And what we ended up deciding was we thought it would be really a nice jolt in the story to find to get her perspective after having seen her from the outside through Eric's perspective for the entire book. And it's supposed to be a little bit shocking, actually, what's actually going inside going on inside of her head, um, which I think really works with the character. <clears throat> um, but there was a lot of work we had to do to get there mm -hmm. um, because Becca loves this character a lot. And I love this character a lot as well, but this is her, this is mostly her creation. Um, whereas Eric, Eric is mostly mine. And I think later projects will probably involve her being as much the main character um, or, you know, more the main character depending on the project, depending on the plot of the book. Um, but for this one, we just kind of had to eventually accept that because of the way it started, this book had to be more about Eric and that the um, rest of the series would kind of um, develop with her. And then... Uh, so that, I think that was one of the biggest collaborative projects that we actually had to really work through. But I don't know if there was ever really an argument about it. It was just a constant struggle on which way we wanted to go with it. Yep. This sounds like really good problem solving. Um, <laughs> this next question is from Aki. Do either of you ever base characters off of each other? And does your spouse know when you do this? <laughs> um, okay, well... When it comes to Becca's characters, I would say that she never bases characters off of herself. Um, He's asking if I base characters off of no, you. I, uh, right. Okay. So I base my characters, first of all, off of myself a lot. Um, I feel like, you know, I always heard the write what you know thing. And Eric isn't me, but he definitely has a few of my qualities. And I think that might be true with a few of the other characters as well. Um, so is Rachel me? No. Okay. No. Okay. Rachel's not you. Uh, the love interest who isn't... So that's cool. He created a love interest for his main character based off himself. That's not me. It's fine. Hey. Hey, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, God. Oh, this God. Is a love, this is a love interest for a, different, a character who is somewhat like me. But anyway, <laughs> um, she's she's trying to make me look bad well um, his, t his twin is a lot like him and his twin isn't love interested in you which is a good thing so yeah 
See? Ha. Thanks, Dorothy. Yeah, um, no problem. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, my character is when I make a main character, it's really hard for him to not be somewhat like me, I guess. Um, when I get outside of that, I'm able to do it so that someone's really different. But, like, seeing from my own perspective, probably because I'm not quite as experienced a writer as Becca, um, it makes it way easier to um, be comfortable in writing everything from that person's point of view. So... Okay, but the question is, do you write characters based off me? That's the that's the yeah. question. I apologize. Do I write characters based off you? I have once. Yes. Did I know about it? I don't think so. No. <laughs> no, it was one it was in one of my side stories that I was doing. Didn't go terribly far, but that's because of the plot, not because of the characters. <laughs> so um, yeah, so for me, I'm going to go with probably no on that. I don't often base any characters, period, off people I know in real life. Right. Um, largely because I think the worlds I create are so unlike real life that I don't really know how I would insert people that I know into that. I do occasionally write, like, chick lit type things that are, like, semi-based off people. But um, I think sort of the key for me is that my main characters are never, like, they always have a little bit of me in them, but almost never are actually much like me. Um, so I think it would be awkward if I then created a, like, Dave love interest for a character that wasn't me. It's funny that you think I would automatically be a love interest as opposed, to so. not, as opposed to just well, another character. Well, let's be real. Who are the guys in my chiclet story? Every single let's, one of them is a love interest, yeah, of course. No, yes. so I'm just it would that also up. be incredibly odd if you based, like, a brother character off of yeah. your husband. Well, that's true. It could just be a, it could just be a good friend. Yeah, but, but anyway. I think, like, I mean, like, you could go, like, enemy, so what does know? it mean to base a character off of someone? Because I see Dave as very much, like, the hero champion personality type. So I guess, oh, any, thanks, so I guess anytime I write a male character that is just kind of, like, the hero champion, like, crusade for goodness, whatever <laughs> type of character that super loves my uh, main female character, because let's be real, I write a lot of characters that have a romantic relationship with each other, then I guess that's theoretically based off of Dave, but I don't like sit down and think, how would Dave react in this situation? And that's how my character is going to do this. So I don't know. I've actually had the idea of, this is once again, not answering the question specifically, but <laughs> um, I, I do have the tendency to kind of want to plug in people that I know into my stories, um, at least when I, you know, I, I think about stories in my head more often than I write, actually. Um, so just plugging people I know into these specific things, people I would want to go on adventures with me, which is, of course, the reason I write myself, one of the reasons I write myself as the main character a lot is because I'm kind of putting myself into these other situations. Um, yeah, I'll take... I, I feel like I take people with me that I know. Um, and Do you tell them? Dun, dun, dun. Mm, n no, but I think Tim, under my brother, Tim, understands that I kind of do this. One of the reasons I write the way I do is because me and Tim actually just used to, instead of we would start trying to play a game, like this was when we were six, you know, we would start trying to play a game where we'd say, okay, well, let's pretend the world's like this. And then three hours later, we'd still be discussing what the world was like <laughs> without ever actually having played anything. Um, so he's automatically a character in everything I do, um, in a way. Uh, Has it ever been super literal, like like he's a twin? No, never like that. Uh, we always have, we usually meet at the beginning, <laughs> actually, interestingly enough. Uh, I don't know why that is, but, um, you know, in... It, Random example in the game in the game Pokemon. I play I play that every once in a while still uh, on the Game Boy and the rival character. I always because he's the other character that you can name. I always name him Tim. I can't not do it. Um, <laughs> so it just as a very small example of how this happens. That's really cute. Um, yeah. So uh, so that's how I I feel like I can do that as well. I can't write from somebody else's perspective that I know. I couldn't just write from Tim's perspective. That'd be weird for me. But having the character that I have from my perspective, the way I see them, is fairly common. Hmm. All right, this question is also from Aki. Obviously, you guys must sometimes distract each other from your writing. Does this distraction ever help, like giving your mind a break, or do you sometimes wish your partner would just leave you alone to write? 
Mm. Ooh, I'm fielding this one. Go, go I'm babe. fielding this one. So I'm a compulsive writer and I like writing all the time. Um, and I'm also an introvert, so I'm okay just like sitting down and writing and not interacting with humans for a long period of time. Dave is an extrovert. It's not the same. Nope. So every once in a while, like he's, you know, he'll go and play a game or read a book or whatever if I'm like, okay, but I'm really writing right now. But every once in a while, he comes down and just wants to like talk to me. And that's when I'm kind of like, oh, my God, (laughs) I'm trying to write right now. It's amazing, actually. Um, Um, (laughs) But yeah, I mean, but it's not like that often because, I mean, he obviously knows and respects the fact that I write and that I want to write. So it just, you know, sometimes he gets really bored and I'm the only person around (laughs) most of the time. And so there are those moments when I'm like, oh, my God, just go away. I want to write my book now. Please go away. I want to write my book. And my love perspe- you, love my, you. My, pers- my pers- perspective <laughs> of this, of course, is um, I'll have something that I want to say to her while she's writing um, that, in my mind, is going to take maybe you know a full thirty seconds to say and have a conversation about, and it ends up being I can't get her attention. It's almost impossible to actually get full sentences out, um, which is fine. You know, I just have to get used to it. But then I think she feels like. I'm bothering her with this for much longer than I originally intend. Um, and so it turns into a little bit more of a, okay, leave me alone. Okay, leave me alone. I'm like, well, you know, it was only going to be about four sentences worth of, you know, conversation. And I just have it in my head and I need to get it out. Uh, when it comes to her distracting me, um, I am very easily distracted, which is one of the things she loves about me, of course. Um, but... I'm so easily distracted that I feel like if I'm writing and I'm doing a good job writing, she absolutely just leaves me alone in like my own little place. And then maybe once every like few hours has come in to check on me, how are you doing? And then, you know, but if, if I were to have another topic, like be suddenly like put at me, you know, if there was something else going on, I might just completely lose my flow. Um, so I think you've been pretty good about that. Except when I need you to kill a spider. Right, if there's a spider, you know, then I have work to do. But Well, that's important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, priority. Apparently. Like, I, I used to throw them outside. She doesn't like that either. No, so. they come back. They, they actually don't. They come back? You get them far enough away. They no, don't they will come back. Put, put them so, outside by the neighbor's house. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so we actually should probably start wrapping up. Um, So I'm going to throw a hardball question at you. Oh, um, how would you two handle it if one of you became wildly successful with your writing? Like J.K. Rowling, books made into movies, front page of the magazines, and the other one did not. Ah. Hashtag the dream. I mean, obviously not the dream is for one of us and not the other one. That's sad. Well, but for either one of us, I don't know. Dave will answer this question in a second, but I would be happy um, because if Dave got super famous writing, first of all, his like most likely project to actually get finished at this point is the one that I'm part of. So, Absolutely. so that would shine <laughs> on me too. Um, but in the event that he wrote a solo novel or series that became like Harry Potter level successful, I benefit from that too. That's pretty sweet. And worst case scenario, I just get to sit at home and write my stories all day that no one else will read, but I don't care because I'm going to write them. So I would be pretty psyched, be pretty great. Also, because obviously that would be a huge accomplishment for him and I would be happy for him. But from the selfish perspective too, like can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, wildly successful includes rich. So (laughs) um, the best part about this, I feel like is if I didn't have to, do certain work maybe you know i i my dream at this point is to be a firefighter but if i could just be an author at home even if i wasn't getting published and then have like a few side projects that i was doing otherwise um like i don't know uh there, there's a few other projects i would want to work on at the same time but being a writer even if you can't get published um, would just be a great job, very relaxing, and you'd be at home and, you know, apparently in a nice house now. Uh, so I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, whether I'm being productive or not with that time. It would just be productive for me. And um, that would be great. So 
if she got wildly famous, and this is something that I have actually thought about before because she's far more likely to do it than I am, based mm-hmm. on well, based on the volume that you put out. That's true. Um, <laughs> High volume compared to me. Still low chance. Com- compared <laughs> compared to me, the chances are high. Um, so yeah, that would actually that would not create conflict in my mind at all. Um, maybe it would for her. I don't know. No, probably not. Yeah, <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> we, I think we both just want to write badly enough um and we both have that creative drive enough that it doesn't matter whether or not people appreciate it doesn't matter whether or not people like you know whether people give us money for it it's more just about the fact that we get to do it um and i'd get to keep doing it either way so Mm -hmm. that is really sweet all right well, mm-hmm. listeners, you guys should know that you'll be able to hear both of these lovely voices next week on our Valentine's special, where we'll be discussing sex and fantasy. But mm-hmm. where can they read your work? Is there anything that you guys have available, or is it all upcoming? I do not believe we have anything that is available at the moment. Um, we were working on a website for our main project, um, and that will have material on it, but it will not have any specific um not like the actual like story. novel you know yeah. excerpts or anything like that so um at the moment no unfortunately that's not the most fun answer to give over radio but all right so when it does become available of course they'll let everyone know through the backroom whispering channels so th- thank you guys for joining me uh it's about time to finish up any last comments or advice for people who are interested in writing with their romantic partners Uh, If you're writing with your romantic partner, just remember, compromise is the key. Don't take things personally. Sometimes, even if your partner is the nicest person in the world and they love the heck out of you, they will hate a sentence you wrote, and that's okay, because (laughs) that's how collaborative writing works. And so you just have to be open to suggestions and open to that conversation. Uh, And for me, I guess I will say people have different styles, and... My style works perfectly for having a collaborative relationship as an author. Um, and if yours doesn't, then don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> Just don't do it. If yours does, it is, in my opinion, the best way to do it because who is going to be around you the most? Uh, so it basically makes it so it's really easy for me to, at any time, get you know the creative juices flowing. Um, and to be able to continue to use it all the time. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, I guess. Thank that's... you. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next Wednesday on our Valentine's Day special, Sex and Fantasy. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Bye. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial by going to audibletrial.com slash thebooktable. The Book Table is a podcast from Backroom Whispering Productions. Our theme music is by Mark Wayne. If you like this podcast, rate us on iTunes, or get in touch with us on Twitter at Backroom Whisper, on Facebook at facebook.com slash backroomwhispering, or by email, backroomwhispering at gmail.com. Tune in again next time!